Mama Tuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. We, 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 we are dealing with some very vital things here. Now, let me tell you this truth. If you get stirred up by the Word of God, it's a good thing. If you initially get offended, it's a good thing. But don't stay in offense, praise God. When it hits you, this is what to do. Try to prove the preacher wrong. Try. At least try. Now, when I say try, don't just sit there and say, ah, I don't believe you. No, no, no. Let me prove you wrong. And let's get into the materials to prove, praise God. And I know one thing. You come back realizing, wow, I never knew this. Praise God. Yeah, tell you the truth. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can we call for that daily bread before we continue? Say this with me with all the faith in your heart. Say, thank you, Father. I demand right now my daily bread. It is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are in our scripture. But we can't get past the scripture. <laughs> Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6. It's so difficult to get past it. It says, For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availed anything, nor uncircumcision, but this one thing. And what is it? Faith which walketh by love. I was telling you something yesterday. Now, let me give you some examples that you can relate with. Everybody God have ever used in the Bible, and that, that's one universal material we can all refer to. You realize something about them. They were not the usual people the society will say, yeah. So, I said, everyone God I've ever used, he picks the most unlikely person. And someone say, what about Apostle Paul? You know, I, you know I'm sure you've heard those, those preachings or, or people talk that way. First of all, Jesus, in his ministry, Pick the most unlikely fellows. Peter, his brothers were fishermen. Even the tax collectors, he pulled them out of service. Yes, he did. You don't need that. Peter, the fisherman, he pulled him out of fishing. He says, follow me and I will make you. I mean, this guy just got an explosion in his business by the help of Jesus. I mean, the right thing you want to do is open your fish processing business. But Jesus said, follow me. Not follow me to fish. He says, follow me out of the river. I'll make you fisher, fishers of men. Think about it. So all his years of fishing was not needed. It avails nothing. See? So what about Paul? So people say, oh, now when it was time for God to write letters to the churches, he had to go look for Paul, an educated man. <laughs> I don't, was it God that said that? Or just your reasoning? Because remember, John was a fisherman. I don't think in all of Paul's writing, he wrote as strong as John did. I mean, you look at the Gospel of John and then first, second, and third John. John's writing had the submission of everything. And that's number one. Number two, history has it that of all the apostles, John lived the longest. John lived the longest because they couldn't kill him. They couldn't kill John because he knew something that probably the other apostles didn't know or walk in, including Apostle Paul. 
Yes, I said that. You see that? So, meaning that John or any other person, Peter wrote letters and his letters are strong. So, you know, <laughs> thank you, Lord Jesus. Sometimes when we talk about these things, people think, you know, like, that's why I always let you know that, or when you hear me say things like, the Bible is not the word of God. I'm not saying that to disdain the scriptures, no. I'm trying to hit something on your mind. Because religious thinking have blinded us even when we read the Bible. Yes. So when you now realize that this is a book of testimonies, and this is not all the testimony that exists. These are testimonies that were compiled by someone or a group of people. And in their compilation, they chose where they wanted to focus on. So the fact that you know, people say, Paul wrote to third of the New Testament, it doesn't mean he was the only writer. It simply means it was his materials that they easily found and they gathered them up. And that depended on the person, for example. The writer of the book of Acts was a disciple of Paul. So naturally, he was more with Paul than any other disciple. So he wrote more of the things Paul did than any other disciple. Now that doesn't mean every other disciple was sleeping. They were all busy doing great things, including your doubting Thomas. Praise <laughs> God. They were all doing great things around the world. But it was because it was only one book of Acts. So it's called the Acts of the Apostles. So if you don't see any apostle written in that book, then means he maybe he, you know, you know, are you are you I've heard people talk like this. People know people say. You see now um, that after Paul and Barnabas separated, nobody heard of Barnabas again. Who told you nobody heard of Barnabas again? Who, who told you that? You don't realize Barnabas had disciples. Barnabas wrote letters also. But you don't hear of Barnabas because the one who wrote the book that you are reading was with Paul. You see that now? He couldn't be with Paul and be waiting for stories to come from Barnabas to put... I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I mean, it's just like if today, for example, um, someone in... Um, uh, let me use a church, for example. Someone in Redeemed Christian Church of God, you know, pastored by Papa Deboe, writes a material about the church. You bet most of his examples, most of his materials in writing will be from the redeemed church. So it will be so easy for someone reading years later to think redeemed church was the big church. Every other church, maybe, <laughs> they, maybe they will even mention some pastors. It doesn't mean there were no people doing mighty works. It just means that the writer of the material you're looking at was in a section. And that's where he could easily get his information. From. Same thing if the person is from elsewhere. You understand what I'm saying? Just simple thinking. Praise God. But you see, that's why I'm telling, I'm sharing these things I'm sharing with you. Because it seems the more you interact with believers, you see how narrow their mind is. And it's narrow because, you remember what I said? You don't get knowledge by reading. I told you that yesterday. You express intelligence through reading. You see that now? So expand your mind beyond the narrow materials you have. Every material is just an example. For example, we read, mostly in Africa, we read most of foreign materials, right? We read most of foreign materials. So, from our children, you know. So, you go to nursery school, 
and then they begin to teach them A, B, C, D, and they say A for apple. Now, the young fellow in my village have never seen apple in his life. And now you tell him A is for apple. He's wondering what apple is. Now they go a step further and draw what apple looks like. And he believes this is what apple looks like. So they say A is for this picture, not because he has seen the apple. Now that's how people are indoctrinated to begin to think Western. Yeah, that's the truth. Now, why don't we write books in our local, uh, local environments and write our own nursery book and say A is for, think of something in your village that a child will know and say A is for that. Now I'm from the River Rhine area, so you can say P is for periwinkle, you know, and a child's like, yeah. So when he sees the periwinkle, he says, this is P stands for this. Now we, we, we're bringing it home and helping them to express their intelligence. So for a long time, you know this is true, for a long time people felt um, people from Africa are dull because they felt people um, from the West are more enlightened or wiser. But you see, the times are changing now. That people from here, I mean, go, go, go around the world, you hear the great things Nigerians are doing when it comes to knowledge, the expression of knowledge. What do you think is going on? You think they taught us knowledge? No, they didn't. We were intelligent. And now we went to their place and that most schools Nigerians get in, now not just Nigerians, mostly Africans, get in and they beat everybody in their class. Why? Why? Because we are finding new frontiers to express our intelligence, and we do it so well. Now, bring this to the reading of the scriptures. That's why I'm sharing this thing with you. There are many ways. Why am I telling you this? There are many ways that God wants to express his love to you, but your mindset have limited him. You feel it must be in a particular pattern. You feel it must be in a particular way. And then you limit yourself. So even Apostle Paul, that you say, oh, he was very educated. Even him had to confess that I count all things as dog for the excellency of the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. What do you think he was saying? His whole education and everything said, look, I had to become a fool so that I would be wise. I dumped everything. I can't use my educated knowledge. Now, that was what he was using. And then he was going about persecuting the Christians. But when he came to Jesus, he had to drop everything he knew. And, and he, he, he took on this new found Jesus and he began to learn he had to go lock himself for years to take out everything else that he has learned about life so that he can see clearly he came back and guess who his greatest enemies were the people who read like him <laughs> you see that you think you you think he will, he will be able to express himself to them. No. The same thing with Jesus. That's life for you. And if you don't know this, you, you, you will struggle or you, you will spend the rest of your life trying to please men instead of pleasing God. But if you just open your heart to God, look at the scriptures. A man who's been sick for 38 long years. He's tried everything. He, 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 fact, he heard that, oh, there is a pool. If you go to that pool, an angel will come and stir that pool. And when the angel stirs the pool, the first person to get in gets healed. Okay, I will go there. Now imagine every other thing he had tried for, in those 38 years. So this was his last bus stop. I'm going to be here until I get the opportunity to jump in first. 
Now, there was a pattern. Maybe there was a certain period of the year or of the month that the angel comes to stir the water. So there was a pattern. But you see, the same thing he's saying here, that in Christ Jesus, it doesn't matter. So Jesus walks to that man and he asks him, do you want to be well? Oh, if I just had someone who threw me inside the water when the staring, when the angel stares the water. And Jesus didn't say, okay, let's wait for the next season when the angel will come, I'll come and help you. Now that would have sounded logical. But Jesus said to him, get up, take up your bed and go home. The angel hasn't come yet. I said, get up, take up your bed and go home. He tried to get up and he realized he could. He's standing, I'm standing. Okay, the man said, I should take up my bed. Can I bend? He could. Can I pick up my bed? He could. Can I walk? I can. Can I go home? Yeah. And he went home. <laughs> He's good. Now, what happened to him? Faith, which walketh by love. Faith which works by God. See that now? No drama. His 38 years of experience didn't matter on that day. All that mattered was the words coming out of the mouth of Jesus. Blind Bartimaeus was the same thing. The woman with the issue of blood, the same thing. Think about it. Moses was raised in Pharaoh's palace. And you know the story. He ran for his life. And went into the wilderness. And that man has been in the wilderness for 40 years. God showed up to him and said, come. You're going to bring my people out of bondage. Why didn't God use him when he was still young, fresh, 40 years ago? He had the willingness he was willing. Why do you think he killed that Egyptian? He was thinking, look, I'm not going to watch these guys deal with my people. He already knew they were his people. Why didn't God use him then? He felt qualified then, but that's not how God does his things. God had to clear that thing in his mind, thinking I'm qualified. Until he got to the point where he felt, I'm nothing. Look at me. I'm a stammerer. I can't do this. God said, now I can use you. Why? His qualification, his education mattered nothing to God. And his years of 40 years in the wilderness still mattered nothing to God. What mattered is, will you respond to the word that I'm speaking to you right now? Look at the children of Israel. They spent all those years in Egypt working as slaves. Only God knows how well they were able to build anything or keep anything for themselves. But in one day, God said, go and spoil the Egyptians. And they became rich overnight. With gold, good clothes, everything you can think about. Just by one command. Go to the Egyptians and ask them anything you want, gold, silver, whatever you want from them. Go ask. Just like that? Yes, just like that. Listen. It doesn't take 24 hours for God to turn your life around. It doesn't. All it takes is faith which works by love. <laughs> and my time is up. I pray, I pray your heart will accept this truth I'm sharing with you. Because I'm seeing God lifting men up. I'm seeing new giants emerging. Yes, giants are rising. And they are only rising because they have received the word of God in their hearts. And I pray you're one of them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.